Okay guys, so in this video I was going to show you a little trick that I call mo a mock factory. So let's get into it. Uh, so basically, you if you write unit tests, uh, you probably, it doesn't matter which language really, uh, you'll probably find that you sooner or later come to a point where you have to create a lot of fake data to just set up your test. And something, at least in uh, TypeScript or JavaScript, that I see quite a lot. The favorite is usually that either you just create, like you copy paste a bunch of uh, JSON or like a bunch of JavaScript objects, or you do a lot of spreading. Uh, you do something like you create an instance for the first test of your fake data, and then you want to change some property on that fake data, and you usually just copy the like the the fake data and then you set some properties or things like that. It usually is the way that it happens. I'll show you an example of what I think it usually looks like. So I have this little uh, function here that does some arbitrary logic and I have this fixture with a bunch of mock data. So I have this interface called my data and then I have some just some fake data basically with an array and some dates and like some properties and so forth, right? And what usually I see people do is this. And I mean, for a simple case like this, this is what I would do as well. You just copy the mock data and then you override with the property that you want, right? And you can like kind of see like the pattern here. It's a fairly straightforward thing, right? Uh, I have a trick or like I have a little like utility function that I use that it does this thing okay if it's this complicated, I mean, then you don't have to use it at all. But uh, what I often find is that even in very deeply nested data structures, when people have like many property levels, they try to like concatenate and like figure out, okay, I spread the top object at the top level, and then I have create some extra object structures, and then I get that property and that property. They can kind of mess, it can get kind of messy when you try to construct in your test every time these properties and there's also a lot of duplication. So what I like to do is something like this. I create something called like a mock factory or something, a mocking, I call it that mock factory anyway, doesn't matter what you call it. Uh, and then you can do the same thing. So this line here is equivalent to this line here, practically in like functional, function, in functionality terms. And as you can see here, I spread and create a temporary object, like a copy of my mock data. And I verify that my name is actually test because I set it to test here. And then I set both the temp and the updated date, uh, data pr uh, name properties to foo. And then these things will be equal. And because they are the same thing, like uh, this is a factory that produces m my mock data. Uh, and allows me to override specific properties by just passing in whatever properties I want to override. And here you can see that it takes just an arbitrary amount of input with different object property uh, objects. I you mean, I could just add age to this object or I can add multiple objects because like the signature is this basically. It takes a variable amount of arguments and uh, of partial my datas. And that's the important part. So that's where, this is where TypeScript comes in. So the reason for those of you who are not like masters of TypeScript, partial means that whatever type I give the partial, I expect that, but all the properties on that type can be optional. And that's what's so powerful because then I don't have to add all the required properties to the object with overrides. I just add whatever I want. And then if then the function underneath will pick out the properties that are actually there and override uh, the mock data that I create with those properties, but may let the stuff that is there that I don't care about, which is in the original object, just be whatever it is, right? And I mean, you can uh, do quite a lot of stuff with this. Um, and uh, so, I mean, it works with arrays as well. You can create a friends array like this and like take the first friend and then you can change the name of the second friend and even add a third friend. Like, uh, Cause it doesn't really matter if it's an object or if it's an array and this works as well. And as you can see here, this becomes, it becomes basically the same amount of code as when you do the spread. It's just that this is slightly cleaner and a little bit more dry uh, because you don't, especially when you do like nested object structures, because you can like, it can get, there can be a lot of spreading. Uh, 
And the way the the thing that I really like about this approach is that I only have to do this once. So in this fixture, I create the I have this create factory function, which is just a higher order function that takes my mock data and returns this function. And as you can see, it's actually type safe as well. So it knows that all right, I take in a partial of my data and then I get back a my data instance. And so I can override the stuff that I want to override and keep the stuff that I don't care about just as it is. So I, someone just writes this once and then we can even reuse it. So let's say that we create another uh, instance of some other data structure. Well, then we just use reuse the mock data factory and it's a copy and like it has all the same properties. It's safe to use. There's no like collision. I don't have to repeat myself, anything like that. So it's uh, it's a, just a tiny little thing that I that makes my day a little bit better. And the way it looks is it's very simple. Like uh, I use the low dash merge function. You could do it yourself if you want to. You can create your own like recursive, like you can just iterate over the properties. So of the object that you pass in and then I mean if it, the property is an ob object or an array or something like that you rec you do a recursive call or like yeah, you can implement it yourself but I'm lazy so I use the merge function and then all it does is that it uh, well it takes a data type of t and returns a function that takes in a, an array of partials t returns a t and then we take an empty object take the data that we passed in in the original function and the override arguments and then we merge them all together and there you are uh, there's your fake data with the, ov the overrides that you want uh, I, it's like not even eight lines of code and it's a utility function that i keep on finding uses for uh, it's really uh, it's really nice uh, hopefully you you'll see this and find that this can help you in your work as well have a great day